The oldest portion of the Palace of Westminster is Westminster Hall. Its central role in British history, along with its enormous size and magnificent roof, is what makes it such an incredible structure. The hall was the birthplace of the British state's key institutions, including Parliament, the courts, and various government agencies. The hall is Europe's largest hall. Began construction in 1097 by King William II, William Rufus, son of William the Conqueror, and it completed in two years. He had planned the project to show his new subjects the majesty and power of his authority. In its early years, one of its main goals was to host banquets to honor newly crowned monarchs, such as Richard the Lionheart in 1189. The pillars that originally supported the roof allowed for three interior aisles. During King Richard II's reign, a hammer beam roof was installed in its place. It allowed the original three aisles to be combined into one large open space, earning the title of the greatest creation of medieval timber architecture ever. The new roof was inaugurated in 1393. Westminster Hall's roof measures 20.7 by 73.2 meters. That's 68 by 240 feet. Henry Evely, Richard's master builder, preserved the original dimensions while refacing the walls with 15 life-size statues of kings as well. The wood for the roof came from 600 oak trees in Surrey, Royal Woods in Hampshire, and Parks in Herefordshire. A massive procession of wagons and barges delivered jointed timbers for assembly to Westminster. The Court of King's Bench, the Court of Common Pleas, and the Court of Chancery were three of the nation's most important courts that were regularly housed here until the 19th century. During Henry II's reign, a royal decree established a regular judge's sitting in this hall. The provisions of the Magna Carta in 1215 required that these courts convene on a regular basis in the hall for the convenience of all parties involved. In Westminster Hall, important state trials were held, including those for King Charles I's impeachment at the end of the English Civil War, and those for William Wallace, Thomas More, Cardinal John Fisher, Guy Fox, the Earl of Strafford, the rebel Scottish lords of the uprisings of 1715 and 1745, and Warren Hastings. It has recently been used in reference to royal and former prime ministers who are buried in state. King Edward VII became the first former monarch to lie in state at Westminster Hall in May 1910. Then, in 1936 and 1952, George V and George VI did the same. Former Prime Minister Winston Churchill finished last among non-royals in 1965. In Westminster Hall, where Queen Elizabeth II's coffin will lie in state, King Charles III delivered his first official address to MPs and peers. Women are expected to dress professionally. Men are expected to dress formally. And slogan t-shirts, they're not permitted in Westminster Hall. Members may not wear military decorations or insignia, and hats are not permitted. Members are also not permitted to put their hands in their pockets. The United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, has designated the Palace of Westminster, as well as Westminster Abbey and St. Margaret's, as World Heritage Sites. These are interesting things. With J.C.,